help. Allegra, many thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, so does Australia have a spending problem or does it have a tax problem? Mm -hmm. Look, to be honest, it has really both problems. And I think it has a spending problem in the sense that this is some of the highest spending we have seen, you know, since the Second World War. Um, but we're still not getting results, even from these high spending, even if you look at something like education. OK, but then the spending goes forward because you've got the NDIS, mm. which is going to only grow. Mm. You've then got all of the defence mm. spending, which goes out into the future as well. Mm. So this is all going to be budgeted for. Mm. So that's they're going to be funded, so that means raising taxes, or other measures have got to be cut. Look, I think that we need to look to get better value from our spending. You know, there, a lot of programs in government are funded, you know, just to the future without actually assessing are they making the difference? And I'll come back to education because I think there's been tens of billions of extra money spent in education, but we're going backwards in terms of our measures of education for our young people. And so that's why we need to really look hard on our spending, but at the same time, we need to look at our tax system, because our tax system is also not driving growth and innovation, nor is it fair, sustainable or simple. And those are fundamental issues to, to the tax system and that we need to address now. We can't keep on kicking this can down the road. OK, so let's go back to the tax system, because the fundamental problem identified mm. by the International Monetary mm. Fund this week is that half of the government's money every year rolls on and on mm. comes from PAYG taxpayers. Yeah. Now, that's not normal, as mm. they point out. Mm. Yet anybody who says, oh, let's change the tax system, let's give a bit more GST, mm. let's maybe take a bit more off the companies, there's going to be howls of criticism mm. trying to bring that down. You could see what happened mm. when Jim Chalmers tried to tax people with more than $3 million mm. in their super funds. Look, I think you're right, tax is really a challenging issue, but I think it's one that we can't ignore. And so what I'm trying to say is rather than pick off things here and there, we need actually a, a proper look in the round of how, of how our tax system but should be structured. But didn't we do that with the Henry Tax Review, of which only eight out of 103 recommendations were taken up by governments then? That's exactly the problem. The review was done, but the action wasn't taken. And so I think this is saying, how can you put together a series of packages over time that can get our tax system in the direction it needs to be. Because currently, you, you look at, um, for example, you know, g fuel excise and GST are declining over time. The only thing is that is growing is exactly as you described, income, you know, um, taxes on income, which as working age population declines, we're taxing our workers harder and harder. And I don't think that's right and I don't think it's fair to the next generation. And it's not right when you've got inflation right now pushing people up into higher tax brackets. Okay. So bracket t tax creep is taking away the benefit that they're getting from pay rises in the future. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. I think we are over-reliant on, on taxing workers and we need to consider what are our other options. And that's what I did, started that conversation with a round table. And this is going to be starting with the experts, but we're also going to be working with businesses, you know, with um, you know, community groups, with unions, and also people in my electorate to get their views, because I want us to have a proper conversation about tax. I want to have a conversation that is based on the fact and based on what do we want our system to look like in 10, 15 years' time, and how do we start to get there? But isn't this always a great argument until I get taxed? Right? Look, There's the issue, isn't it, really? And that's where the politics yeah. has come into it. I think you know, it is a challenge. But, you know, it's interesting. My community of Wentworth is, you know, one of the more wealthy communities in, in the country. Um, and even with the super tax um, change that has been proposed, you know, I had a lot of people who said, it will affect me and I think it's, I think, and I support it. I had someone in Double Bay this morning who said, I think, you know, we should change the tax system in this way, even though it disadvantages me. And so I do think people are willing to say, we've got to set this up for the long term. But so Jim Chalmers tried to basically head off the stage three tax cuts. Mm. that will cost $250 billion mm. over the next decade. Now, effectively, Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, mm. cut that off and said, nope, those tax cuts are going mm. through because he recognised how politically dangerous it would be to take away something that had previously been promised. Look, I think you're right. I think Anthony Albanese said there'd be no changes to the tax system in this, in this, you know, in his first term, and I think that's what we're going to get, no fundamental changes. But I think we need to set ourselves up so that the next term that we that we do get fundamental changes to our tax system. But is the what problem I'm of do. that that you've got political capital right now? Mm. The popularity, popularity of Anthony Albanese to be able to try and get through The Voice and a range of other initiatives mm. is probably as high as it's ever going to be. Mm. So isn't it easier to make these really hard changes early in your term when your popularity is high? Look, it's harder to get GST, as John Howard mm. did through, because he really did burn a lot of capital and probably ended up costing him his job long term. Look, I 
I, you know, it's it's they made those choices. I'd love to see them do strong tax reform this this um, this electoral cycle. But regardless, I'm going to push on and try and put up some credible packages that would deliver um, deliver change for for the tax system. Okay, so in your changes, what would be your number one priority? I'm still uh, saying I'm still in a process on this, but yes. I think there's some I think some good tax candidates for it. It's firstly the fuel fuel excise tax because that's declining anyway as people switch out of um, uh, switch into electric vehicles. So in Unless we deal with this, we are just going to have a declining ca revenue there. I think one of the big ones, which no one really wants to deal with, is, is stamp duty. It's a state tax, but really the feds have to get involved if they're going to make that change. And the, the getting out of stamp duty into probably a land tax is really important because it helps move, allow people to be flexible in their housing. But and that's got a, critical. But you've got a brand new New South Wales Premier who's got that situation, but he campaigned on the I fact know. that he was going to get rid of that land tax yep. and bring back the stamp duty. I know. Well, that's he was, he, I think he made absolutely the wrong decision. And I think that the government needs to have the courage to say this is the way to go. This is the reform that is needed. Um, so, so then take me to something else because um, there's a whole lot of other taxes that are around the place because the Treasury gives hints maybe more money coming out of superannuates, mm. that, that the, the tax benefits are too great there, that money being handed to the next generation through mm. superannuation, mm. that that's too generous. Mm. Are these some of the areas the government should look? I, look? I think that the government should look at the balance between income taxes and taxes on unearned income. And I think that, you know, we are taxing our workers, you know, higher and higher, particularly with bracket creep. And I'm a big supporter of the Stage 3 tax cuts, um, but I believe that we should you know, be looking at saying, is this the right balance and will this be the right balance over time? I think the other area that I do think we need to look at is in relation to resources. So the, the Treasurer has hinted he's interested in the PRRT. You know, what I want to make sure is, as we go through this next boom in these critical minerals, I want to make sure Australian taxpayers get the money that they deserve from those minerals and so that can really prop up our economy. And so I don't believe that the P, you know, the PRRT as it stands, but nor, you know, as the royalty system as it stands, gets enough value for the Australian taxpayer and I think this is an opportunity to address that now. Allegra Spinner, great to have you on the program today. We'll do it again soon, but Thanks keep so the campaign going. I think it's just fantastic. Thanks so much, Thanks Rob. so much for your time.